Carbohydrates, good or bad? The media spends a lot of time villainizing the carbs. And many popular diets over the past few decades recommend low carb or no carb eating patterns. Therefore, it isn't surprising that the majority of my clients come to me fearing carbs. However, each and every time, I find that by exploring the science behind the nutrient with them and breaking it down to the level of molecules, they are much more confident in choosing healthy eating patterns that work for them and their energy levels. Knowledge really is power. So stay tuned because in today's video, I will be doing the same for you. We will explore the role of carbs in our diets, go through the science of carbohydrate metabolism and help you make healthier decisions every day. Hi everyone, my name is Didi and I'm a registered dietitian with ddtitian.com. Welcome back to the series on the nutrients behind the diet where I help you to reach that aha moment that will allow you to piece together your healthy eating habits. So whether you're interested in learning more about nutrition or are finding ways to eat healthier, this video series will support you in making more informed choices. So in today's video, we will take a closer look at the role of carbs in our diet and let's dive straight into the carbohydrate fact file. So carbohydrates are macronutrients, meaning that we need it in relatively large amounts in our diet, as in we measure our carbohydrate needs in grams rather than micrograms. Carbohydrates provide us with energy, also known as calories. So we get about four calories per gram of carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are mostly made of carbons, hydrogen and oxygen. There are actually many types of carbohydrates, each with a slightly different effect. And it is the type, quality and quantity of the carbs you eat that is important to consider when making dietary choices. So when looking at the type of carbohydrate, we usually look at their structure. Carbs often make chains and we give them different names based on the length of these chains. Some of the smallest carbs are called monosaccharides. Two of those stuck together are called disaccharides and a much longer chain of carbs is called a polysaccharide. So if the health effect of a carb is based on their type, then we really should explore the different types. So first of all, the smaller carbs called mono or disaccharides often fall into a group that we commonly call sugar. And this is the type of carbohydrate that most adults and children eat too much of and is known to have a negative effect on our health if you eat too much of it. Sugar is often added to food, including cakes, biscuits, chocolate, sweet breakfast cereals and flavored yogurts. And many drinks also have sugar added, such as your fizzy drinks. Sometimes we add sugar to food ourselves at home, but often it is added by food manufacturers. Some foods naturally also contain a lot of sugar and these include honey, syrups, such as maple syrup or agave syrup, fruit juices and nectars. And these do still count as free sugars and have a similar effect on our health as added sugar. Foods such as milk, fruit and vegetables also contain sugar, but these have less of a bad effect on our health. So we will take a look at the effects of these sugars on our health later in this video. Then the next group of carbs we will look at are starches. And these are polysaccharides, meaning that they create a long chain of lots of smaller carbohydrates. We often find starch in foods from plants, such as potatoes, grains and rice. And we also get starch from foods made from these plants, such as bread, pasta and breakfast cereals. And then the final group of carbohydrates are fibre. Fibre is a very complex polysaccharide with lots of bonds between the different chains of smaller carbs. We often find fibre in the cell walls of plants and so foods that contain fibre include whole grain bread, whole grain pasta, vegetables with the skin on them and pulses such as beans, peas and lentils. So then, why do we need carbohydrates? Well, they play an important role in our energy metabolism, in managing our risk for certain diseases and in controlling our calorie intake. So looking at our energy levels first, as I find that this is where the role of carbs in our health often starts hitting home. We are going to have to go on a little journey through our digestive system to truly understand what happens when we eat that biscuit, the white bread sandwich and that brown pasta salad. When we eat carbs, and all carbs are similar in this way, our digestive system tries to break them down into glucose, also known as sugar, before we absorb it into our bloodstream. Once the glucose is in the blood, it moves from there into our cells with the help of insulin. And once the glucose is in the cell, we use it for energy, fueling all our activities from running to simply breathing. It all uses up energy. Any glucose that we don't need to use there and then can be stored in the muscles and in the liver. However, if we eat much more glucose than we need at that time, we can also turn the glucose into fat and store it as a source of energy for later. Now, let's take a look at what happens to our different food sources of carbohydrate as we eat them. First, here is a little graph of our healthy blood sugar levels. So the green line is healthy blood sugar level. Coming towards the upper and lower red line means our blood sugar levels are getting too high or too low. 
So now we decide to eat a few biscuits. Let's take a look how this biscuit is broken down and absorbed from our gut. As our biscuit contains lots of sugar, our body doesn't need to work very hard to break it down into glucose. As you can see here, some of the sugar is already found as glucose and can be immediately absor absorbed into our bloodstream. So then let's look at what happens when it's in the blood. So our sugars rise quite quickly. You can see it hitting that top red bar there. Our body doesn't really need as much sugar as we've just had, so we can store some of it as fat for later use. However then, because we're storing a lot of the sugar now as fat, our sugars start dropping rapidly and you might start feeling a little peckish again not long after those biscuits, simply because your body had such a rapid influx of glucose that we couldn't use it up as fast as we absorbed it. And as a result, we feel hungry again rather quickly and have probably stored some of this glucose as fat. Next, what would have happened if we decided to eat a white bread sandwich instead? Well, this food mostly contains starch, which needs a bit of digestion before we can absorb it as glucose. So as you can see here, each time we've managed to cut off one of those glucose, we can absorb it into our bloodstream. But this process takes a little bit longer and is slower. So then back to the chart, we can now see that our blood sugars are rising more slowly and we are giving ourselves more time to use up the energy as it comes. We might still store some of it as fat, but likely not quite as much as with the biscuit and you might start feeling hungry maybe about two hours later this time. And lastly, let's take a look at what would happen if we eat that salad with lots of veggies and some brown pasta. So this is what it would look like in your gut. There is some starch there, which we can start breaking down to glucose as we digest the meal. However, can you see how many more bonds need to be cut or digested before we can release the glucose? Some of that meal was definitely fiber. And as it is a much more complicated carb, it takes much longer to digest and it actually often passes through our gut mostly undigested. Our sugars, as you can see, therefore rise slowly and take long to reach their peak. You're probably using up the glucose as it comes, leaving little to be stored as fat. As you can expect, you will take much longer now to feel hungry, not just because our sugars are dropping so slowly, but also because that fiber is just sitting there in your gut, filling up space and making us feel full. Now, be aware that how much glucose we use up at any time can be affected by our activity levels. For example, muscles that are exercising rely on carbohydrate as an important source of energy. Muscles have a store of glucose which they use up when active. However, you may have already heard of a marathon runner hitting a wall, and this is often when the glucose stores in the muscle are used up. So to continue running, a marathon runner needs quick acting carbs to help prevent that. And this can mean that a sugary food may be needed at that time to allow for plenty of glucose to rush into the blood and to be available for the run. Next, let's take a look at what effect carbs can have on our risk of developing diseases. Fibre is a very important part of a healthy diet. And this is because it helps to keep our guts healthy. Eating enough fibre can prevent constipation and can help move foods through our bowels. Also, some types of fibre often found in oats and pulses is even linked to reducing blood cholesterol levels. So diets that are high in fiber are shown through research to help lower your risk of bowel cancer, cardiovascular disease, and type two diabetes. And many people don't eat enough fiber in the day. We should be aiming to eat up to 30 grams of fiber every day. However, most people get just under 20 grams. And lastly, we can see that a diet high in fiber is also linked to lower calorie intakes. By replacing sugary and fatty foods with foods higher in starches and fiber, you can likely reduce the calories you are eating and are at the same time likely going to feel fuller for longer. It is important, however, to be careful about what you put on your whole grain bread or into your brown pasta dish. And it is often what we eat with our starchy fiber foods that can contribute to weight gain. So skip the Nutella on the bread and avoid those creamy pasta sauces to get the most out of your healthy meal. Now, what happens if I cut out the carbohydrates like they recommend in many diets, such as the ketogenic diet, the Atkins diet or the Ducan diet? Well, we can most definitely survive without added sugar, but it can be very hard to completely avoid all types of carbs. And this is because we find carbs in many foods, including fruits, vegetables, and dairy. When we avoid eating carbohydrates, our body can use protein and fat for energy. In the long term, however, this can put us at risk of missing out on key nutrients from our diet. For example, it would be very hard to get enough fiber, which we already know has an important role in our gut health. Also, high fiber starchy foods, fruits and vegetables and legumes are important sources of nutrients such as B vitamins, vitamin C, iron and calcium. And by avoiding carbs and eating more higher fat protein foods such as meat and dairy to replace these carbs, you are also likely to increase how much saturated fat you eat, which can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. 
A good alternative to a low carb diet really is to avoid overly sugary foods and to eat natural, healthy sources of carbohydrates such as fruits, vegetables, potatoes and whole grains. So this can help you feel fuller for longer and reduce your calorie intake. I mean a balanced diet really is key and eating some healthy fats, some protein with every meal and a large variety of fruits and veg and whole grains is still coming out best when it comes to research into healthy and sustainable dietary patterns. So how much carbohydrate should we be eating? Well, the World Health Organization recommends that just over half our daily calories should come from starchy foods, fruits and vegetables. And a healthy plate would look something like this. Half plate of veg, a quarter plate of whole grain carbs, and a quarter of protein foods. So just be aware that the advice in this video is generalized and some people may be recommended to eat differently to this. For example, there is emerging evidence to suggest that those with type 2 diabetes may benefit from a lower carbohydrate diet to assist with weight loss. Although it is not clear if this is a safe way to manage type 2 diabetes in the long term. We always recommend for everyone with diabetes to see a registered dietitian for specific advice on their diet, including whether any specific dietary changes might be beneficial. So as you can see, nutritional science is again bringing us back to its recommendations to eat a well-balanced diet. No nutrient in isolation is completely evil or great. They have good and bad sides. And it's also important to remember that we don't eat nutrients in isolation. We eat food, we eat meals, we eat a balance of each of the nutrients spread out over the day and over the week. And by keeping that balance as healthy as we can, we are nurturing our bodies with all the nutrients it needs to function at its best. So let us know what you thought of the video. If you want more videos such as this, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be continuing the conversation on my Facebook page, DDTitianRD, where I'll be sharing more fact files and infographics about carbs this week. So definitely take a look. And if the information in this video made sense to you, then comment carbs in the comment section below. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next Tuesday.